All right, so this is the Pathfinder Fiction Workshop. We're going to be talking about what's upcoming. Um, I'm James Sutter. I'm the fiction editor. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? Um, Pierce Waters. Um, I don't know what I am in Pathfinder Fiction. You're, you're the <laughs> resident. The sales guy. Yeah. yeah, director of sales. <laughs> Editorial guru. Uh, I'm Christopher Paul Carey, one of the editors. I'm Eric Mona. I'm the uh, editorial intern. <laughs> and yeah, Lisa, where are they? Yeah. I don't know. Around the house. Lisa, Lisa Stevens Warehouse Labor. <laughs> I and actually I, I think that the only thing I have to do is the you know the old Roman <laughs> more often than not I'm the gladiator. Hi <laughs> Terry, it looks at me like what do I do? And I'm like <laughs> So well, you're not, it works like that more often. <laughs> it's true. Um, so one of the questions we get asked most often, because everybody loves you know, their Dragonlance and their Forgotten Realms novels and their night, is when we're going to do Pathfinder <coughs> Fiction. Um, and the answer is, it is coming. It is definitely coming. And it's already here somewhat in the form of the Pathfinder's journals, which are the serialized fiction we've got in, uh, in each volume of Pathfinder. But the actual, you know, a Pathfinder novel line is coming, it is in the works, um, and there's a lot of interesting stuff coming up that I think you guys are going to like about it. Um, also, just an overview of the Pathfinder's Journal. Um, it sort of changed form since it started. Uh, you know, it started, I guess, like two years ago now um, with the Ian O'Klein Adventures, which was originally we were doing a different author for every episode, essentially. <coughs> and, you know, we had an overarching story, but you know, the honest truth is that sometimes that overarching story, we only knew what was coming, you know, the next episode, if that. Um, and there was a lot of me and, you know, to a certain extent, Wes and Jacobs scrambling around trying to make sense of it all. And hopefully we did. Hopefully the, uh, the climax worked. But um, so now uh, with the Legacy of Fire Adventure Path, we decided to switch to a more cohesive approach where we'd have a single author do essentially a serial novella for each adventure path set somewhere in that region to kind of have something that you can hand to your players and say, if you want a feel of Katapesh, read Shauna T's story. Um, and that's, you know, there won't be any spoilers, there will be maybe some Easter eggs, but it's 100% player safe. Um, and so that's where we've sort of been our testing ground for Pathfinder fiction, and people have seemed to respond really well to it. Um, and that's going to continue. We're going to, even once the Pathfinder fiction line launches, uh, you know, in earnest, we're still going to keep the Pathfinder's journal. Um, and we've got Elaine is just, Elaine Cunningham is just now finishing up her uh, Shauna T series, which is about a druidic Pathfinder in sort of the Assyrian Katapesh area. And then for the Council of Thieves, we've got uh, former Amazing Stories editor Dave Gross, um, who's, you know, another industry veteran. Uh, who's going to be writing what's essentially a Sherlock Holmes style story set in Cheliacs. So imagine if Dr. Watson were a tiefling, this is kind of the story you would get. And it's fabulous. I think it's the best fiction we've done so far. And, you know, considering I've written a chunk of it, I, I think that's pretty. It's even better. Yeah, it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, And then coming up, we've actually just signed on a uh, Another guy that you probably know of, Jeff Grubb, is going to be writing for the um, Kingmaker Adventure Path, which is coming out and it's set in the River Kingdoms. He's going to be doing something there that's, again, um, a little bit different, more of a, a comedic sort of adventure. Um, we're all really excited about that. That's still in the planning stages. But, uh, but yeah, I kind of, and should we talk about the editorial? Let's talk about the editorial vision of the uh, of the novel line because the one thing that everybody tells us um, is they really want Pathfinder fiction, but they're also really terrified that we'll screw everything up. Um, and you know, we because we've all seen it happen where you know, in one area or another, a it seems like the book line starts to drive the game or the game starts to drive the book, and everybody's afraid that one side or the other is going to end up compromising a lot. And that's something we've discussed since day one um, that's always been foremost in our concern. And I'm pretty much we are, our answer is that it's not going to break. Pathfinder fiction will never break the Pathfinder campaign setting. Um, you're not going to see us suddenly destroy you know, Taldor 
in in a Pathfinder novel. Um, and the way we're going to do that is just by having the same people in the editorial pit that do the same, you know, the people working on the game are also, to a certain extent, the people working on the fiction line, and really having a lot of communication there to make sure that everything works. And we really believe that you can have a big story without having a big world changing event. Um, you know, we've seen a lot in the, the Pathfinder's Journal stuff that we've done. There's a lot of, you know, it, you'll have a whole adventure that you get really invested in the characters, and there's triumph, and there's despair, and yet the world looks exactly the same when they're done um, to everybody else. I don't know, do you want to speak to that? Well, it's kind of interesting in the, I don't know how many of you were around for the last panel where we were talking about secrets of TSR. Um, my mind's just jumping back about 35 minutes when we were talking about Dark Sun and how exciting it was that there was a novel line that came out at the same time as the book line, there's the Prism Pentad. But by the time you got to the fifth book, a bunch of major NPCs were dead. The world was completely different in, in concept than it was at the beginning, and you're kind of screwed. I mean, they basically had to put out another campaign setting shortly thereafter just to account for the changes in their original book line, um, which I think was a huge mistake. And um, I have always been a fan, sort of, uh, just as far as TSR campaign settings go, Greyhawk has always been the, the setting that I like the most for a lot of different reasons, um, thematics, uh, nostalgia, um, some of the, the, the influences there. But I think one of the reasons why I have liked it more than the Forgotten Realms, for example, or Dragonlance, is that I really felt like it was a setting that was primarily for role-playing games and not a setting that was primarily for someone's, you know, um, fiction. Uh, and so you can see that the, the, those, those book lines have really driven the fiction line. And, and if you, the, the, the honest truth is, if you can have a, su uh, a successful fiction line, which is pretty tricky as it turns out, but if you can if you can have a truly successful fiction line, you will sell a lot more copies and generally probably make more money than you will on an RPG line. And so, even with the best of intentions, it's some you know it certainly has happened before that it, you get into this conflict. Well, maybe a novel writer wants to kill off this major NPC, but the game designers are like, hey, no, that we need that guy later down the road. Well. You know, speaking as a manager, it's very difficult to make a decision that isn't going to favor what's going to be the most profitable for the company. So I think that if you have a successful novel line and a game line, the novel line, you have to really work hard so that the novel line doesn't drive the game line. Because people come into games and people come to fiction, although that Venn diagram has a huge amount of crossover, they're not all the same people. And so um, that's been sort of my edict from the ground from day one. Uh, even pre-day one, was, you know, if we're going to do a fiction line, the fiction line can't drive the game. You know, we, we can never lose sight of the fact that Pathfinder uh, Chronicles is a campaign setting for a role-playing game. And so there will not be Pathfinder fiction that kills off major gods or that, you know, erases whole countries from the face of the map. Um, it, in some ways, we are aided, I think, by some of the types of fiction that inspired our own designs and things with the game world. And so we, for example, would be much more likely, I would think, to publish a book that is in scale uh, similar to like a Fafford and the Grey Mouser story by, by um, Fritz, Leiber. Fritz Leiber than we would uh, to do a, a story that's in the style of somebody who would just kill off the king and, and you know put, oh, the paupers rise from, you know, uh, the surf them all the way to the king, you know, that's not really the kind of storyline that we favor in our own reading and design, and so it's probably not going to be the type of thing that we're doing.